بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم سورہ الحجر چیپٹر 15 ورسز 32 ٹو 44 اینڈ دیز ار دی ریفرنسز اینڈ دس از اور کانٹیکٹ ری کیپ سو فار دا قران از ا کمپلیٹ بک اینڈ اٹ کالز اٹ سیلف ال کتاب اینڈ ڈکلیئرز دیٹ واٹ از نوٹڈ ود ان اٹس فولڈز از پرسپیکٹیوس اینڈ میکس تھنگز کلیئر ٹو ریشنلی تھنکنگ ہیومن بینگز So in fact, uh, as we know, Quran helps to develop our intellect. Those who resort to kufr waste their worldly life in the pursuit of things associated with physical existence and thus live at a sub-animalistic level. Now this term sub-animalistic may be a bit harsh, but Quran itself has said that uh, since you, animals uh, do not have metacognitive ability, so they don't have choice, whereas human beings have. a choice and intent that trait because of the divine energy within us hence we need to be better than animals and not just pursue our uh, physical uh, desires and then uh, die a kufr over here means that uh, we do not live at a at a human level at a higher level and uh, when the message comes to us to think through it we reject it and say no we will keep on following our desires such a life always ends in regrets and disappointments towards the end of their stay in this world because we come with certain cognitive dissonance there is actually a civil war which goes on within our head all our life and uh, as a consequence of course we turn this uh, world as well into a chaotic and uh, and uh, world full of conflicts so it is important for us to understand through the first we have come to the quran that all those dissonances which are within us can be removed effectively by using the Quran guidance events in the human world follow known laws and values and those who make an effort can find their details and thus benefit from their life knowing the law is important because without knowing the law we live a life of ignorance it is a darkness The time of respite is kept within the functioning of nations so that people can learn from their mistakes and mend their ways in time. In fact, this time of respite is available at an individual level as well, and we can check it. For example, if we harm someone and uh, then forget about it, it is possible the same person will come back at some point and will try to harm us. So it is better that if we have realized this aspect of causing harm to someone, we should go. to him and settle it and apologize for that those who pass the message of allah to others should never be fearful being called insane or mad because essentially those who reject the message of the quran and to whom and those whom we invite towards the quran and they don't like it they are not reacting to us but they are actually reacting to the message itself people take time to accept the guidance of the quran and we need to understand this that people take time Uh, nobody changes overnight it takes years and years of efforts and thinking which brings change within us people who look for miracles and worldly life do not understand the functioning of the law of requital in the human world there is nothing miraculous each self is responsible for its deeds and this is where we need to remain focused the quran is preserved and protected for all times we went through a number of points uh, regarding this mu'minin need to make it part of their self sense of being in order to strengthen their iman next is there are enough resources for sustenance kept in the planet for all times for mankind so all those people who think there are less means of sustenance and the population has increased yeah, they are wrong uh, if we look at the total sum of resources even today we will see that these are far far more than the population we have in the planet we need to use our intellect to utilize the available resources in the era in which we exist and make efforts to discover more many of these resources need to be made sustainable for all times next is our life in this world offers us the opportunity to either go ahead or to lag behind it depends on our choice however this is within the concept of the why i said about the is uh, that in the physical domain of course those who accumulate more uh, resources and more means of sustenance they are considered to be successful whereas they are the ones who create imbalance in the world 
In the concept of Deen, it is all about the development of the self, which is accessible to everyone. The issue before us is that everyone should know what is to be done about their self and what is the purpose of creation and what is the guidance given in the Quran. So at least they are apprised with the permanent values and the divine attributes. Only then they can make an informed choice. The present situation is that most of the mankind even doesn't know about the Quran and its guidance. And that is the issue before us. The competitiveness kept within us is meant to be directed towards doing solid deeds so that the whole of mankind benefits. It is through solid deeds that we develop our divine attributes within us. Because these attributes are the ones through which we solve the problems. Everything in the world is created from water. Life and death in the universe follows Allah's laws and these are kept outside the control of human hands. For example, every human self will taste death. Now let us look at the first two verses for our presentation today, 32 and 33. Being a possessor of choice and intent, all our acts are being questioned by the law of requital. It's very interesting. It is the law of requital which is looking at what we do in our life. Kala ya bliso malaka Allah takuna ma sajudin kala lam akunle kunle astrale basharin khalakta hu min sal salin min humain masloon. If you remember the previous uh, presentation, there was the uh, introduction to and Malaika were asked to bow before um, Adam and about Iblis who transgressed, who rebelled. Allah inquired from Iblis the rebellious emotions of man. Why were you not among those who bowed before Adam? Why did you adopt transgression? Then he said that it cannot be possible for me that I bow before such a creation which is created from hollow dark sounding clay i.e. the material creation of man is such that his rebellious emotions remain gripping him. But because of that quintessence of divine energy, the human self that has been given to him, he becomes enabled from this so that these emotions do not overwhelm him. So over here, uh, Iblis refused to bow before Adam and now Allah has questioned him. So this is the way this dialogue goes with the Quran. And we should keep it in mind that, that this is metaphorical. But this is being displayed right in front of our eyes around us. Now, display of Iblisi mentality, not thinking through the issues of life. Iblis is asked about his conduct here, which points to his choice and the ability to act on his choice. Malaika do not have choice, hence it becomes clear that it is about Adam and his ability to make choices in life. Some people mix it up by saying that Malaika and Iblis are the same, Iblis was one of the Malaika. But if we go through the verses of the Quran, we will see that Quran clearly differentiates between the two. And then Iblis and Shaitan both are pointed to as human inner emotions. Because the acts which are associated with Iblis and Shaitan are those which we see human beings doing around us. This also means that man possesses the potential to express himself and his intention. There is the ability to use intellect and make decisions. Though in verse Al-Baqarah, verse 30, the Quran says that Malaika said that the Malaika also commented that you are creating this Adam who is going to create chaos and will shed blood on the planet. So we can say that these are the kind of expressions of the real situation which is manifesting before our eyes in a metaphorical way. Then Iblis gives the reason for his making a different, different choice from what Malaika did. Here he differentiates the status of the human self from the physical self. Because Malaika accepted it and Iblis said, why should I bow down before Adam? What is in him that, uh, that, uh, that I should follow his uh, law, his commands? It is an important point which he says after understanding that Adam's physical side has originated from mud through the process of evolution, while he himself is the product of divine energy. And he says, Kala ana khairum min hu khalaktani min narin wa khalaktahu min teen. In another uh, 
a verse that is 712 it is says that i am better than him because you created me khalaqtani you created me at least he is accepting that allah has created me men not from fire whereas you have created this adam from from mud and it's very interesting because this is really going on as cognitive dissonance within our head as well and of course we need to analyze this statement even more as we progress through the plan and better than him as i am created from fire while he is created from clay so he is making his own creation separate from the body and this is factually the position of the human self because it is the human self which then goes on to live beyond our physical existence cognitive dissonance is a display here we experience the display of such a mentality in the world in which differentiation between equal human beings is rampant in every society so if we look at at a very basic level so there is a discrimination over there as well that iblis says i am created from fire and this body which is now attached to me why should i follow it why should i go for that kind of value system which is going to be a benefit for both of us for example race gender color tribal parties geographical status or geographical affinity status wealth power nationalism religious etc the quran here has pointed to one aspect and the remainder need to be figured out by us in the world created by the unbridled human intellect now verse this 34 35 the consequences of following the path of iblis qala fakhruj minha fa inna ka rajim wa inna ka wa inna alayka lanata ila yawmit din allah commanded then get out from this condition you are deprived of every kind of blessing if man becomes overwhelmed by his emotions and does not keep these under the obedience of the divine laws then he remains deprived of the blessings of life and this deprivation remains with man continuously both in this life and in the life of the hereafter also the respite given to iblis needs to be challenged using the guidance of the quran so for the reflections on these two verses 34 and 35 what are the consequences of not staying within the permanent values sent down by allah because iblis disobedience also points to us that we should think a bit more closely that what are the consequences if we do not stay within the permanent values and the world which we have created around us because some of us i know some of us hope that within this system if some adjustments can be made then we may get a better world in these two verses the quran has summed up three important aspects of going against the command of allah i e making wrong choices in life just reflect on the wording of these verses that the quran has explained very calmly the situation to iblis and to all of us firstly it is stated that by virtue of your choice you have excluded yourself from the benefits associated with following our value system however you are allowed to do this and we will not interfere with your choice and this is something which is brilliant we stated in the quran that it is your word we have given it to you and we know that if you do not follow our revelation wahi of allah then you will create problems but we have built the system in such a way that whatever you do the consequences are inbuilt within it and of course physically you cannot go outside the planet and whatever you do within the planet there will always be people who will stand up against you when you do wrong but as is noted in our guidance you will as a consequence become a regime i e you will live an aimless life which will appear to be busy but will reap nothing at the end and uh, this is the part of the verse i have quoted over here from surah hadid alamu anna mal hayat ad dunya laibun wa lahun wa zinatun tafaqurun bainakum wa takasurun fil amwal wal aulad that if you alamu if you gain knowledge if you keep your eyes open and use your perception then you will find out that this life of yours if you do not come to the quran then it becomes just a sport and entertainment and you gain nothing naibun balahun that you think that you are gaining something while you are uh, and but and at the same time 
a nameless life is waste of time. Zinatun, and of course, it is very attractive. The fahurun that you become very competitive, you envy each other, you feel like exceeding each other, bainakum among yourself. But the kasurun, and you gather and and accumulate. The kasur is is plenty of things and conveniences of life. And you deprive others through that. Fill amwale in your possessions and in your children. And this is what is going on all around us. We have gone over these aspects before as well. Secondly, the appearance of the term lanato, alanato, which means keeping somebody away from the blessings and bounties of life, keeping away from the reality of our existence. Alanato has expounded the meaning of a regime, i.e. you will not be able to bring out your latent potentials in your life and will keep yourself away from those aspects of life which give life to the human self. We have gone through these aspects before as well, that these divine attributes which are mentioned in the Quran, all these are latent potentials within us, barring those, for example, Allah is the beginning and the end, and the end of all of all, of all, of all. But other than that, all those divine attributes, we are supposed to learn about them and train ourselves and then manifest them. Because once these attributes we manifest through solid deeds, then they give us a new life. And this is what the Quran says that in case you don't come to the Quran, then of course you will not benefit from these things. And if you don't benefit from these, then that means you will not have a self which can live on beyond your physical existence. Thirdly, do not ever think that this total freedom of yours will continue unhindered and will not be challenged. Not at all. There will arise among you people who will not join you and they will stand up for the cause of Allah and that will be the end of your period of respite. This is termed as Yom deen So Yom deen is not something which will come in the life of the hereafter. That of course is true. But fact is that if we establish the system based on these permanent values and manifest these potentials which are within us in terms of divine attributes, then this will turn into Yom And if that era comes, as and when that comes, that means Iblis will become ineffective. Verses 36 and 38, Iblis has respite till the time that man establishes the system of being. Here I've quoted three verses. Iblis stated that he should be given respite till the second life of man because now he has uh, very squarely and, and clearly told Allah that I'm not going to follow your laws. And uh, since I'm not going to follow your laws, so don't uh, end my life right now. Give me time and then see how things play up in your world. Up to that time when he removes whatever kinds of obstructions are blocking the path of human progress and achieves true human freedom. When after eliminating all these hurdles, man achieves true freedom according to the way of Allah, at that time his destructive emotions will not be able to dominate him. So he has been given respite, and we see that respite. In fact, at present, the belief system is well established in the world, and we can see the effects of that. The results of human striving, that is Iman plus solid deeds, can lead to success as noted by the Quran. Here the Quran has drawn our attention to the fact that this conduct of the beliefs can be countered by following the guidance of Allah. We can relate to this state of affairs by looking at our outlook prior to coming towards the Qur'an and how this has transformed once we acquire Iman and strengthen it through solid deeds. Understanding the modus operandi of the Iblisi system helps us to understand our potentials to stand up against battle systems. In an attractive style, it is noted here from the tongue of Iblis that I will stay in this state until I decide to be resurrected from the dead self to acquiring a new life for myself. Until that time of acquiring my life, I should be able to use my freedom to choose. Once I understand the consequences of my bad choices, then I will look for guidance. Here, by mentioning Yama Yuba Soon, Besat means that something which is resurrected. The Quran has stated that an era can arrive and obstacles on the path towards the Quran can become removed through the hands of Momini, hence, it fails. 
then Allah confirmed to Iblis that you are given enough time to make your choice and then live by the consequences of your individual and collective choices. That's part of the deal of creating human beings with divine energy. And this is why some of us might think that why Allah does not interfere and to understand that why he doesn't interfere, we need to understand these verses and come to grips with the reality of the situation on ground. You can see this aspect clearly in the world where we have full freedom to choose within the confines of the man device systems. Verse 1538 sums it up for us as students of the Quran that if you make an effort, you will know all the precision and criterion in your life. By stating Yomal Yomal Waktil Malu, that this will be up to that time about which you can gain the knowledge. Malu means that you have to make an effort to know it. It's not that we keep sitting and, and, and something will just come to our mind and we will understand it. In the human world, we have to make effort. And there's plenty of knowledge in the world in the form of books and other media. The ball is put in our court to decide how long we wish to be without the system of being. Allah being Hayul Qayyum has all the time in the world. It is we humans who have finite time in this life and need to strive for being. And we have gone through this aspect before as well, that if we start making effort, then as our understanding becomes better and better, we start to understand the problems in the world. And we also understand the significance of the system of being. The Quranic guidance places it squarely within our reach in one lifestyle, in one lifetime. For example, the models of Yusuf, Ibrahim, Rasulullah, and other messengers of Allah are given in the Quran, and these have been explained. And the uh, two models we have already gone through, that is of Hazrat Yusuf and Ibrahim, it's not both. And of course, as we go through the Quran, this is the story of Rasulullah and his companions. Let us look at the next two verses, 39-40. Iblis accuses Allah for his being astray and fatalism. So over here, Iblis accuses Allah that I have gone astray because of you, because you made me go astray. Kala Rabbe Bima Agwatani, La Uzay Nanna Lahum Fil Arde, Wala Uvayan Nahum Ajmain, Illa Ibadaka Minhumul Muklasi. He said, O oh my Rabb, the way in which you have deprived me from the blessings of life and blocked the path of tranquility is on me, I will also do the same and will present the allurements and accoutrements of physical life in such an attractive manner that they will remain entangled in death and will become totally oblivious of the higher aims of human life. And in this way, like me, they will also become deprived of the true blessings of life. Yes, and now he says, those people who will be your devotees, I will have no power over them. They will keep themselves under the obedience of Wahi, hence rebellious emotions will not be able to overwhelm them. A great lesson over here for us and also the way world works. We have seen it that people do not like the pure Quran, they will oppose it, they will cause impediments, and, and they will try to hinder its path. The path of Iblis is clearly visible if we use the Quranic light. The path selected by Iblis is full of those attractions of life which distract man from coming to the straight path. The Quran has drawn our attention to this in a number of places. And uh, I earlier quoted part of this verse. Alamu anna malhayat al dunya wa laibun wa lahmun wa zinatun wa tafaqadun bainakum takasadun fil amwali wa laulad. An interesting part of verse 1539 is where Iblis accuses Allah of misguiding him. This is happening blatantly right before our eyes where people hold on to inaccurate beliefs. And we see it uh, in the religious world. For example, Allah has already written the fears of everyone. This is more or less in every religion that some kind of uh, fatalism exists. Or Allah already knows what we are going to do in our future life. Or all those who are going to be born is pre-decided at the time of the creation of the heaven and the earth. Or the time of death is fixed. And there are others as well where uh, some kind of a blanket mercy and love is uh, associated with God that he is going to forgive everything or if you believe in so and so, all your sins will be forgiven. And these kind of uh, belief systems are part of this Iblisi 
attitude or Ibnisi mentality. And we see that it is, it is, uh, it hampers our development. And those human beings who hold on to these beliefs, they are bound to lag behind because intellectually they are hampering their own abilities. They are not manifesting their best and they undervalue themselves. By letting these false beliefs occupy our consciousness, we, how can we understand the guidance of Allah? There is no way with these kind of beliefs one can understand the Quran. The moment we bring it in, that is the end of our understanding of the Quran. We really block it. Never. Allah declares this state of human mind as shirk and calls it inna, inna shirk Allah zulman azim. As I said in our presentation on the concept of Allah, that shirk is actually contaminating our own mind. And if our mind is not contaminated, to see how many divine attributes we will manifest in the real world and what change these will bring in the world around us. Whereas by contaminating our mind, we fail to value our own potentials and as a result, we cannot bring best out of us. We may be able to get the successes and conveniences of this life of the, that is of the man-made system, but there will be nothing in the hereafter. And that is why Quran says, that human beings do supreme injustice to themselves by contaminating their own mind. The concept of Allah presentation has a lot into it. And I will, I will say that we should listen to it a few times. The reason is very clear that our intellect is meant to create a new world based on deen and if it becomes contaminated and fails in doing this and as a consequence creates a world of jaheem. And we know jaheem means that where we are not able to bring our best out and in the hereafter it means that our self will not be of that level of uh, its uh, eminence where it can go forward or evolve further. Then mankind suffers as a whole. And the more of these people exist in the world, the world will remain backward and will be full of conflicts and chaos. We have seen that in this chapter, the Quran has drawn our attention to seeking knowledge in every aspect of our life on this planet. And for example, Quran has used words, Kitab in Malum, Bikadar in Malum, Ilah Yom Il Waqt Il Malum. If we do not understand some aspect of our life, we need to make an effort to find it out not start making guesses and wrong assumptions in order to avoid hard work. There is no shortcut to gaining knowledge. We have to make an effort similarly to get rid of all false beliefs within our intellect, within our mind. We have to make an effort and constantly challenge our own line of thinking. There is no shortcut on the path leading to the system of being. Reaching the state of al mukhlasin devotees of Allah, we have to make efforts and do deeds so that we reach a higher state of intellect together. See, al mukhlasin means that we have to be, it is the assumption over there Quran is making that you are together. It's not uh, one man's journey. Free from differences and with affinity of hearts, and we are able to see clearly the functioning of the ploys of Iblis. Because when we are together, it is not one man's efforts Others will think and, and will be able to look at the problems from different angles. It is not to condemn it, but to grow out of it by coming into the light of the Quran. Growing out of the darknesses of an unguided life, Quran says, Allah is the supporter, aider, and companion of those who have Iman. And once they have Iman, then He brings them out of darknesses into light. We need to keep in mind that Allah has pointed to one supreme reality here. None can escape the influence of Iblis except those who come to the Quranic guidance. So let us not remain under any doubt. It is based on visible, concrete evidence all around us. Because Sometimes we hear this kind of a news, uh, this kind of opinions that what will happen to those who do a lot of good but do not have Iman. Now this kind of opinion or these kind of suspicions or doubts are the ones which we need to remove through our own efforts. We have to go through the Quran and make our own efforts to understand the, the value system which is explained in the Quran. Verses 41-42, sirat al mustaqim is based on clear evidence. The Quran illuminates it with science. 
قالا حاضا سرات علیہ مستقیم ان عبادی لائس اللہ علیہ سلطان اللہ منتبہ کا منظر Allah said that the path on which the devotees will tread is the balanced and established path which will take them straight to the intended destination of life. This is that path which leads towards me. You will not be able to overwhelm these devotees of mine. You will only be able to overwhelm those who leave this balanced path and follow behind you. Their end will be annihilation. Iman needs to be firmly declared, leaving no ambiguity about its existence within ourself. This is verses 41-42, some further reflections. Allah declares the criterion for surat al mustaqim This is from uh, Surah Al-Imran, verse 51. In Allah, Rabbi wa Rabbukum fa'buduhu haza surat al mustaqim And uh, over here, the Quran has said from the lips of Rasulullah sallallahu follow him as noted in the Quran, that is, follow Allah. Inna Allah Rabbi, that Allah is He, my Rabb, wa Rabbukum Fa'buduhu, and He is your Rabb as well, and you must follow His guidance, because that is where the path to success lies. And Haza Sirat al-Mustaqeem, this is the straight path. Follow Him as noted in the Quran, and you will be on this path. Here the Messenger declares that Allah is my Rabb and your Rabb, i.e. a statement of fact. We also reach a state in which we declare based on our own iman that Allah is our Rabb. So for us is that we must have this firm conviction developed within us that Allah is our Rabb and we are following his laws after understanding the permanent values and displaying these uh, divine attributes through solid deeds. Then after being on this path, he invites us to declare that inna rabbi ala sirat al-mustaqeem. Just see how powerful statement we make in the Rabbi Allah Sirat al-Mustaqim that after following this path for a while, we say through the results which we get and the way ourselves develops, that, that firmness, that conviction within us that this is the right path gives us that uh, kind of uh, understanding where we say in the Rabbi Allah Sirat al-Mustaqim that Allah is definitely in Sirat al-Mustaqim and we are following him. This is that state of the self's development where we come to grips with the understanding of Rububiyat, conceptually and practically. The need for it, we understand it, its finer aspects we understand, and we are on the path of solid deeds with the full conviction of our heart and mind. The next part of the verse points to another sign where Allah stated to us that having made the path of Iblis very clear to you, do not let anything distract you from this path of mind. And over here, a great part of this verse, Inna ibadi laisa laka alayhim sultan, that you will never have any power on him because he will know that, that such a self knows what are the inventions and, uh, and con concoctions of Iblis are. They will be on this path with an unwavering Iman and they would have strengthened it by the recipe of Saleh deeds as noted elsewhere by the Quran. Actually, what happens is that the more we go along this path, a time comes when if we look back, then, then we can see that there is no possibility of us going back to the same path which we abandoned long time back. So this is part of self-development that it understands the things very clearly. These men of Allah, that is Mu'mineen, will be aware of the allurements and attractions of the Iblisi path of life. Because after seeing the uselessness of these allurements and attractions, uh, we, we learned that these are the ones which have created so much chaos and conflicts in the world. Of course, these are important within the value system of the Quran. Here Allah has beautifully and firmly declared to the followers of Iblis that it will not have any authority on them because they have now become mukti. What we need to understand is that it is in the use of these allurements and tractions and conveniences of life which are to be utilized across the whole of mankind, not to be concentrated in few hands and others just envy them and look at them and, and remain poor and deprived. And that is a terrible situation in the world as of today. Verses 43-44, Allah's promise is meant to be fulfilled. وَإِنَّا جَهَنَّمَا لَا مَوَيْدُهُمْ أَجْمَعِينَ لَهَا سَبَتُ أَبْوَابٍ لِكُلِّ بَابٍ مِنْهُمْ جُزْءٌ مَقْسُونَ Surely there is a hell made of destruction for all of them and they are bound to reach there. 
instruction will indeed be alike for all, but the people to reach it will be different. Every group among them will have a separate path from which they will enter the destruction of Jahannam, i.e. sirat mustaqim which leads to Jannat is only one, but when it is abandoned, then the wrong paths are numerous, and different people reach destruction by a different paths. And we can see that in the world. The correct point for target is only one. There can be many wrong points on the target. There is only one target for the bull's eye. There is one correct answer. Wrong answers are countless. I thought this is a beautiful sentence, which Lama Burez has noted down in the meanings of the Quran, Quran volume seven. There is one correct answer. Wrong answers are countless. As we said before as well, that the word is very precise and, and accurate. It's only we find people, those who do not understand the functioning of the law of requital, think things are ra at random and they are based on chance. There's nothing on chance. Everything is extremely mathematical. The deen of Allah is one. The self-made religions of men are many. And this is the reason that there can be no sex in deen. There cannot be any sex because having sex is landing ourselves in hell. Now, looking at some more aspects of these two verses, 43 and 44, human beings create hell themselves while living a life of hell, they complain as well. And this is interesting. We see it all around in the world that people are unhappy and at the same time they complain about it and then do nothing about it. And when the message of the Quran is presented, even to limited uh, people or contacts around us, they also reject. Most of them reject it. They look at you with a blank look. Over here, our attention is drawn to the fate of the people who follow the wrong aims of life. They all land in a hell created by human hands. This hell has two aspects. The physical part of it, where human beings create wars, chaos, conflicts, imbalances in the world, etc. The second part is the fear and grief, which is Hoff and Husan. Husan is uh, something within us, which is uh, we can feel cognitively like anxiety, and the fright, uncertainty, doubt, suspicions, all these are related to Husan. And these have impact on us, created at the cognitive level, which keeps people suffering from anxiety and uncertainty. This creates psychological disorders. Iblis represents the state of negative effects of human ill deeds on their self. It has numerous forms. In this also, human beings have choices, but about what kind of evil they wish to have for themselves and for their families, societies, and nations. For example, in today's world, the leaders in every state deliberately plan evil, then execute it knowingly, but reject it as something good, i.e. under the label of good. Because if they present it as an evil and saying that uh, what we are creating now is going to harm you in the long run, and uh, you might even, it might even shorten your life, then nobody is going to believe them. In fact, they will come out on the streets and protest and, and remove them. But wherever evil has gone beyond a certain li limit, people do stand up and come on the roads and come on, on, onto the streets. The general public accepts it as they do not use their eyes, hearing, and intellect. And Quran has pointed to this fact that they are given all this intellect, arts, minds, and eyes, and ears, and uh, and, and other faculties, but they do not use it. And we are witnessing all this in the world around us. By mentioning the term Ajma'in, the Quran has left no exception. It has stated that the path of Iblis is the path of perdition for all. This is something on which we need to think profoundly that firstly, by not coming to the path of the Quran, we remain on the path of ruin and this life being finite will terminate in our death. Secondly, by staying away from this path, we do not get those players of life which are exclusively associated with the path of Allah. And this aspect will be covered in our next presentation. Thirdly, we have to perpetuate evils in the world which need the aid of as many mu'mineen as possible to counter these. Fourthly, we fail to provide a solid role model for our children and do not let them have an informed choice based on the ground. In the second verse, we need to be aware that there are many paths leading to hell, but there is only one straight path. 
if we are not together on the path where hearts are becoming united through our efforts, then we are still far from the understanding of the Quran as a system of deen. Finally, a few points to remind ourselves. The path of the Quran is not an easy one because those who call themselves Muslims have abandoned it many centuries ago. And as a consequence, we see the word as noted by Allah. Zahar al-fasad fil barre wal bahre bima kasabat aydin nase le yuzi kahum baad al-lazi amulu la allahum dakti un. The chaos created by human hands is inviting us to do something about it. Over here, Quran has said that fasad, chaos has appeared in the land and, and on the seas through the hands of human beings. Bima kasabat aydin nase aydi is hands. And uh, because of this, now they are going to taste uh, the consequences of what they are doing. And we can see that around us, they are all tasting it. And uh, we are witnessing that as well. But we know why it is happening. And Quran says that Allah is waiting. The law of requital is waiting that they maybe they learn lesson and come back and stop doing what they are doing. If we notice it and then think that let someone else do it, then we need to stop complaining as well. At least, even if results do not materialize in our life, at least we can stand up and say we did our best within the means of us. We should wait for someone else to rise and do it. And if this does not happen in our life, we somehow survive the evil created by others, then good for us. However, if we see clearly that through the Quran, it is possible to bring about change by following the procedure and process explained in it, then we need to first understand this quickly and start working towards it with those who are striving on this path. First is, إِلَّا لَذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَتَوَاسُوا بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاسُوا بِالسَّابِرِ This is from Surah Al-Asr. And the Quran makes an exception, except those. Because Quran says that man is in loss is in a perpetual loss and this is proven by the history as well by the passing of time but except those who do good deeds after uh, accepting iman and then what they do is what awaso bil haqqi what awaso bisab because they are coming together they promote haq and they also remain steadfast sabr over here means to stay steadfast Never think of giving up. The next verse I've quoted over here is La ikraha fi deen. There is no compulsion in deen. We are on this path by choice. And we have a choice to give up this path as well. And loss will be ours. Then Quran says, Katabayana Roshdum and Al Gayya. The Tabayana is very clearly enlightened. This path is illuminated of Rushad and Gay. The wrong path is illuminated as well as the right path. The one who does kufr to tagut, who, who moves away from the evil system, human billah, and holds on to Allah's rope, Allah's book. He is he has held on to a very strong, unbreakable handhold, which is never going to let us down, which will never break. And we should just stay here and see what happens. Wallahu sami and alim, and Allah is sami and alim. And if we are also sami and alim, we can understand it. Secondly, developing a firm resolve that we will never be in the company of those who are and will be in jaheem. Wallazina kafaru wa kazabu bi ayatina ulaika sabu jaheem. Those who have decided not to develop their self and think that the life will end with death. Uh, we are interacting with them because we are in the same world, but of course we should understand it clearly. Initially, dissociate intellectually. Recognizing the signs of jihim is part of our self-development. Life emerges from death according to the law of Allah and Quran says, Beautiful words over here completely puts light on life and death that it is out of life comes death out of death comes life and it is just like the earth which is dead and the moment water comes over it the life comes out of it and if we do the same as we have gone through it under the concept of Allah that if we bring Iman within us, the life will emerge. The life has already emerged. And once we keep doing solid deeds, this life will become stronger and stronger and is going to come to fruition at some point in time in the future. The laws of life and death are clearly defined. However, for this life to emerge, the seed should have the potential to grow. 
And with that, I come to the end of this presentation. Thanks for your time and for listening and for sharing this.